Good day, medical morons. Today, we learn about ventral hernias. In keeping with our layman's approach to the medical field, I will remind you I am a 30-year RN with knowledge based on what I see in and around the OR. Knowledge used to bridge the gap unknown by you. Okay, ventral hernias is a common type of abdominal hernia with several different causalities. So, if you've been noticing a softish lump or bump where a hardened abdominal muscle used to be, you could have a ventral hernia. Let's check you in. <laughs> a hernia refers to a protruding exit, like a hole through the muscles or abdominal wall, of which intestine or other body tissues pass. We will focus more on the ventral hernia today. So, what are the signs and symptoms? What is a ventral hernia? Come on in, Yadishka. Where is he? Oh, there you are. <laughs> I'm right here. Yes, okay. <laughs> Let me move the chair here. Okay. I'm going to come a little closer. There you are. So, the first sign is a bulge or a bump under the skin in the abdominal area tender to the touch. So if you touch it like this, it hurts. You're thinking, oh, something's wrong. The bulge may flatten when laying down or when pushing against it. There is techniques for reducing it. It's called a reducible hernia. So intense pain can occur if the intestine becomes trapped or strangulated. So if you have a bulge right here and Inside, it becomes twisted. You're strangulating your intestine. And with strangulating the intestine, you can cut off the blood flow to the area. Your intestine is starting to die. This is a medical emergency, as a dead bowel from loss of blood flow needs to be saved or taken out. So a ventral hernia occurs at a general location along the midline vertically. We're working down the midline. She can have, Ira may have an incisional hernia from somebody who's done prior surgery. And what happens is it becomes a little weak in this area and it bulges out. Or she could just have a, a hernia down the center here. So she's got abdominal muscles on either side. and has a weakness right here. So she may have a bulging out here. She could have an umbilical hernia, which is generally any area within the umbilicus. It could be right here. We had two inches around the umbilical, uh, umbilical space is typical. So uh, epigastric stomach area, a little higher, uh, can be seen in both men and women. Inguinal tends to be more common in men. Uh, of course, inguinal is located in the groin area. It's down here. Okay, umbilical or belly button hernia, right there, occurs in the area of the belly button. Uh, incisional hernia located at the previous incision site right here. About 20% of patients who've had prior abdominal surgery will develop an incisional hernia. This type of hernia can occur from weeks to years post-surgery. What are the risks to getting one? Weaknesses at prior incision sites, substandard placement of a prior mesh, so a weakness here. A mesh sometimes is put in and it's like a little square or, or sometimes it's a round mesh. Uh, they put it in the space, they sew it up around this area right here, and then it kind of keeps the abdomen from bulging out in that space. It keeps reoccurrences down or low. Weaknesses in the abdominal wall present from birth, being obese, severe coughing or vomiting, pregnancy, 
straining to lift or move heavy objects, straining with bowel movements or urinating, injured abdomen, and of course, old age. What doesn't old age screw up these days? You're gone. Trust only a trained medical doctor to properly diagnose you. They will review your history and current health issues along with a physical exam. They may order imaging tests, CTs, ultrasounds, or MRIs of the abdomen to look for signs of a ventral hernia. The goal of hernia surgery is to repair the hole, the defect in the abdominal wall, so that the intestine and other abdominal tissues cannot bulge through the wall again. The surgery often restores the tone and shape of the abdominal wall by repairing the hole and bringing the muscles back into position. We know ventral hernias do not get better on their own and they will likely worsen. They do require surgery, so let's go to surgery. Your surgeon has taken into account your age, health issues, and history. The size and location of the hernia, possible infection among other things. It's important and goes without saying, albeit I'll say this, Everyone is different and he or she, the doctor, takes this all into account. This avails you of the best possible outcome. They will likely prescribe a pre-op regimen to include lab work, additional x-rays or EKGs, applicable clearances for surgery, and you may be given a bowel prep with a liquid diet and cathartics. General surgery with an endotracheal tube is required. You'll lay in a supine position, which is flat, anatomically flat. Position with a slight flexion to the hips and knees. So we'll put a pillow underneath your knees. This will help with the abdominal wall relaxation and take the tension off the operative site. A gastric tube may be inserted orally or nasally to decompress the stomach. A Foley may be used. These will be done after you are asleep. Laparoscopic, several small incisions are made. A lighted tube with a camera is used to help guide the surgery. So obviously we can do ventral hernias laparoscopically. We can do it robotically as well. So like laparoscopic, it's performed in the same manner, small incisions and a tiny camera. Robotic surgery differs in that surgeon is seated at a console in the operating room, operating from there. Know this. The length of the incision may be tailored to the hernia defect, but can extend the entire length of the abdominal wall. So open hernia repair is an incision made into the abdomen where the hernia has occurred. The intestine or abdominal tissue is pushed back into place. They're reducing it. The surgeon is highly skilled and uses specific and special techniques throughout the surgery. Mesh material may be used to reinforce the repair and reduce hernia recurrences. There are many different kinds of mesh and the doctor will have their preference. However, this decision is based on the surgeon's technique, skill level and your prior input. The skin is usually closed with dissolvable stitches and glue. So post-surgery, a sterile dressing is applied. Over top this dressing, many surgeons will wrap the abdominal wall in a binder to provide additional support during the post-op period. The orogastric tube and the Foley will likely be removed before you awaken. So your surgeon may or may not choose to use these post-op instructions as you are different. They will tailor the differences to you. Um, with this in mind, clear liquids are usually resumed within a day and the diet advanced as tolerated. Hematomas and surgical site infections can occur. Be careful. Watch for foul smelling wounds, drainage, increasing pain, or temperatures. They can be bad. You need to notify your surgeon. Refrain from strenuous activity and lifting for six weeks. This concludes your hernia surgery, and I hope I was able to give you a little insight into it. If so, it makes me happy, and I was happy to do this for you. Sharing this video with someone who has an up upcoming surgery is a great way to say, I'm thinking about you. You have my support. I've seen this on the internet. Take a look. I probably have their applicable surgery already produced or it's in the making. So hover over, press subscribe, press like, 
move to the share, copy it and paste into your email or text and press send. It's that simple. It makes you a caring neighbor, friend or family member and keeps the wheels of this country rolling. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> Who's in this face? <laughs> they can stay there. <laughs> Okay. Later. That's it. Okay. That's it. See you in the next video as you continue to expand your knowledge of VOR. Later.